All right, well, uh, what's going to happen here? We're going to do parasites in the aquariums, uh, freshwater only, of course, and then kind of just go from there. Um, I, I don't really know where I'm going with all this. I spent a lot of time doing a slideshow here, and we'll just kind of continue with that and kind of just keep going. So anyway, the very first thing I want to show you is common treatments. Um, ICX, you know, external parasites and fungals, what that kind of takes care of, general cure, internal, internal, external parasites. Uh, you can obviously kind of, uh, you know, read that on the screen. Uh, erythromycerin, erythromycerin, bacterial and fungal. For bendosol, that's dog dewormer. Um, I'm not going to get into that a whole lot because that's not 100% proven. All the research I've done said one tenth a gram per ten gallons, but let's keep in mind. Whoops, let's keep in mind. Well, we didn't want to do that. Um, yeah, we'll go here. Uh, let's keep in mind on the right hand side. You're gonna see disclaimer. I am in no means an expert, but attempting to show possible parasites. I've had some of these in and out of the aquariums, and I can give you some information from what I know. But it's going to be general warm information at the beginning, and we're going to kind of break it down and everything. But commonly, as you see on the left-hand side, if you see a worm swimming, it's usually going to be white, white or pinkish in color. Uh, normally, they're non-parasitic. What I mean by that, you get them in on plants, you get them in on... Um, uh, you know, other aquariums, if you move decorations to different tanks and blah, blah, blah. Normally, if they're free swimming, you're fine. And here's the problem. The the parasites you can't see normally require, uh, you know, you got to have treatment. Well, the problem is, you if you don't know you have them, you don't know how to treat them. And that's what I'm going to try to explain through all here. And again, the disclaimer. So let's go to the very first starter here. Common worms. We're going to start with round worms, and there's a couple variations of that, quite a few really. Um, and the um, Camelanus, I don't even know how that's pronounced. Look at that gross picture. These are internal and external. They are definitely parasitic. Um, generally, general cure is what you want to use. The reason being, if you looked on the previous slideshow, is internal and external parasites, okay? So that's kind of where we're at on that. And you probably want to do erythromycin because they're going to obviously have some bacteria and fungal infections. But take a look at that. Um, it's that gross little worm there. We're going to show some more pictures of there. They spread from fish to fish. I don't know that you can get them in on plants. I have no freaking clue if that's even possible. Um, but... Um, you know, we're going to just kind of keep going down the list. Occasionally, you're going to hear me take a drink or something of, uh, well, probably drinking beer, I'm going to be honest with you, and whatever. But uh, we're just going to keep going down the list and go from there. Now, these are some more pictures oops, of what roundworms look like. These are actual size in reality. But I don't know if my pointer even shows up on here, but... On the bottom left, you're going to see um, uh, what they look like when they're coming out of the anus, basically, is what they are. In the right-hand picture, I think it's a cichlid, maybe. I'm not sure. I think the left-hand picture is a guppy. Um, but these are nasty, nasty things. One of the worst things you could ever get in your tank. Um, and again, you have to... Um, I'm not going to tell you how to treat them, Okay. You got to look them up, and that's exactly how they're spelled K A M A L L anus. And again, I don't know if you can see my pointer. Um, you have to treat probably every tank you got. They're going to come in from fish, they're not coming in from plants, they're not coming in from whatever. They have, I believe, three larval stages like uh, eggs, to uh, then they, they get inside the body, and then after they're done with the body, they free swim. So it's kind of like ick. you got to kind of kill them all the way around. I probably didn't even put ick in the slideshow, but anyway. So, roundworms continued. Nematoids, I believe is how you pronounce them. Um, 
they're external worms. They they are non-parasitic for the most part. These are like the little white worms you see on occasion. If you ever look in an aquarium, they look like they swim like a snake, a sea snake, a, a little figure S, if you will. Um, they don't hurt anything. Um, but as you can see in the notes there, they thrive on waste <clears throat> in the water. So the less you feed them, the better you are. <clears throat> the problem is... If you get to an epidemic like the lower picture that you see on the uh, lower left there, um, if you get if you start to get that many, there's probably thousands more you can't see, kind of like a cockroach. And, and then the problem is that um, once you get to that point, there are ways you can kill them off, but if you kill them off and they all die at one time, that might be a hell of a load on your system and now you're looking for a crash because now all of a sudden you're spiking ammonia, you're spiking, you know, the whole nine yards. So you got to be real careful about that. You you starve your fish for about three or four days, let them pick them off. They may or may not. Again, research these things if you if this is what you think you have, and look for the best solutions. You know, you can get, you know, usually fish will eat them. Uh, there are certain other fish that'll eat them more than others. You know, and and this and that, so we're just going to have to keep going from there. Why is somebody calling me? Alright, anyway. Um, oops, my bad. Flatworms, we're kind of going down the list. This was roundworms. Flatworms, planaria is the same thing. It's the same difference as these guys here. Okay? Um, they're external, non-parasitic. Well, I believe... Uh, they kind of have triangle heads. and Same thing. If you feed a lot less and you happen to get them in, usually on plants or whatever, the same thing. Uh, killing them off, you could cause a crash. I'm going to give you a couple more examples here, I believe. Yeah. And so you can tell a flatworm. They stick to the glass and they look like, I don't know, they got two little bitty eyes there, as you can see on the two left uh, side of the screens. Um, they can... You know, same thing. The, the, they'll feed off, uh, you know, uh, overfeeding and kind of like snails in a way. Planaria and uh, nematoids, if I'm pronouncing it right, I don't know. They, they're they like snails. The more you feed, the larger the population is you're going to have. The less you feed, the less you're going to have to deal with it. Do you ever completely get rid of them if you get them? I don't know of any way. Safe way. Um, again, it will be up to you to identify these creatures, do your research, and figure out what may or may not kill them. And the sad part is what may or may not kill these, may or may not kill your snails, may or may not kill your shrimp. That's not my job. My job is just to point these out and kind of get you in a direction, okay? So let's go to the next slide here. Bam, right there. All parasites are introduced. I mean, they can only come in several different ways. Plants, snails, other fish or tanks. There are exceptions. Uh, let's say a mosquito lands in your water. Obviously, you can have mosquito larvae, you know, develop. Um, because there's not chlorine in there. I mean, this is tank water, you know, we're talking about. Um, also possible... Yeah, depending on where you live, damselflies, dragonflies, we're going to get in, in, into insects later on down the slides. But anyway, right there, if you learn anything at all, as I didn't learn, because I'm stupid, um, I got a bunch of plants in, and I did not follow any directions at all. Now, I found these directions on a couple different websites. You can see right there for yourself. You mix a solution of no stronger than 5% bleach. I, I'm not going to read all that to you. You can plainly see it right there. Um, I would write that down, come back to it, and follow the same thing. Um, I ended up getting seed shrimp. I ended up getting uh, a damselfly larva. I ended up getting a couple, uh, a leech, at least one leech. Um, a couple other nasties because I ordered hornwort and apparently the person on eBay that grew the hornwort, I guess they kept them outside in a freaking tub. I assumed, like an idiot, that 
the hornwort was grown inside in tubs, disease-free. You know, anytime I sell java moss or any of my plants, they're you know, I guarantee them disease free, but I can't do that right now if I'm going to sell hornwort because I got them in there. I can't get rid of certain things. Um, and we'll get into that later on how to get, try to get rid of other creatures. Some are just almost freaking impossible, you know? So we're going to keep going down the list, but please follow these directions because the problem is. I want to transfer hornwort and other things into other tanks that I'm getting ready to start up. And I know exactly what's going to happen. The little critters are going to fall. Alright. So, crustacea. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's going to include what you see there. Daphne, a seed shrimp, cyclops, scuds. Most of these are considered harmless, um, you know, to anything but the smallest fish. And what I mean by small fish, I don't mean a guppy. I don't mean... A sword tail, I don't mean any of that. I mean probably fresh born, um, you know, uh, CRS, uh, you know, crystal red shrimp. Fresh born um, guppies are probably fine because they're not microscopic enough. But and there's a huge, huge uh, deal on seed shrimp from uh, Flip Aquatics. Because he does nothing but shrimp, you know, CRSs, and he does tigers, and uh, all uh, crystals, all the other kinds of crap I can't raise because all mine have basically died. But I think seed shrimp feed off of him, and he's had a video or two, I believe. You'd have to check it out, do more research. I don't know of any way to get rid of them once you get them. Um, I've tried... Uh, you know, my guppies just won't seem to eat them. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. Next slide. These are kind of what seed shrimp look like. Now keep in mind, these guys are microscopic. A couple millimeters at the most. You see the one on the far right, how it's kind of greenish. Mine look green. But they are basically no bigger than if you took the tip of a pencil and poked it on a piece of paper. That's how big they are. But you can see them swimming around in the aquarium. And they go up and down and in circles. And they go everywhere. Um, I have no idea what the world they eat. I, I don't have a clue. Uh, I assume algae. But I don't know what they do to other fish. Uh, all the research I've done on there so far has not said that they would latch onto and feed off of anything. So I don't think it's a huge deal that you have to worry about. But it's like every aquarium. You don't want critters in there. And, and my problem is, down the road, I'm going to be selling a lot of these fish out of these tanks. And I would rather not give the new owner a seed shrimp or, you know, um, any of the other critters we're going to talk about. But there's not really a good way to get rid of them other than what you see. You starve your fish, let them feed on there. Um, guppy's mouths are pretty freaking small. I do have no idea how often or what they'll do to feed. You know, I, 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 I don't know what they do. Obviously, they would eat, um, you know, other worms you introduce, like, um, uh, well, you name it. Uh, you know, frozen stuff and, and this and that. Um, I don't know if they get to the mouse. And these guys, the problem with seed shrimp, man, these guys... Once you get them, they can live, even if you drain your tank out and kept the gravel in there and it was completely dry for a year or two, somehow they have the ability to stay in there. They're basically like little clams. Look on the left-hand uh, side there. Um, they have little shells there and uh, they're like little clams. But they have the ability, once you get them, for my understanding, there's almost no way to get them out. I don't know of any chemical, and I've looked this up over and over and over again, other than your live bears and other types of fish would keep them under control. But if you took them out, they'd probably repopulate. But again, it's kind of food related. So, again, it's really up to you to research, not up to me. I just got to live with them until I figure out a way to get rid of them or talk to a paid consultation maybe to Corey from co-op and see what he can advise or talk to Flip personally. <clears throat> I don't know. But anyway, let's just keep going. This is running along. Hydra. These are bad, bad people. 
Uh, you don't want them. I've never had them in my tanks. I would assume they come in on, again, plants. Keep in mind the chemical dip at the very, very beginning. Um, they're basically kind of like freshwater jellyfish in a way. Um, to the left is extreme close-up. Uh, to the right is a small close-up. You can see all the tentacles. Um, my understanding is Ferbenosol would be the treatment of choice. Um, Ferbenosol, um, I, I, you can get it, again, it's called, uh, the one I've used before, and I have no idea if it works, it didn't work on the seed shrimp, it's called Safeguard uh, K9 Dewormer. For dogs only six weeks and above, um, <clears throat> it came with uh, three one-gram pouches. Now, I have a very, very miniature scale that'll measure down to tenths of a gram and below. My understanding is you would put a tenth of a gram in there per 10 gallons. So a 20-gallon tank would be two-tenths of a gram. A gram package then would last you five days. And you keep dosing it for X amount of days. And it won't affect any of your life in there. I can attest to that it didn't kill any of my guppies. I can also attest to I don't believe it killed any shrimp. But I can also attest to... It didn't work on the seed shrimp and this and that. I don't know how it works on Hydra. I've never had Hydra that I know of. I've not seen it. So, again, I'm just trying to show you pictures of things you might see. Now, what I'm not going to show you is pictures of things you can't see. Um, there, Throughout this uh, slideshow, I'm not going to show you flukes on gills. Really. I mean, they are like you know, 0.5 of a mill millimeter, and unless you have a dead fish that you pulled out, or you can see well enough on a one and a half inch fish that he's got things around his gills, I, I can't help you. So I'm not going to touch things that are close to microscopic. All right, so next slide. Insects and larvae. Well, insects and insect larvae. We're going to cover mosquitoes, dragonflies, damselflies, mayflies, water beetles, which you should never see, and blah, blah, blah. Most are introduced via plants, except mosquitoes. And as you know, mosquitoes, they can come in your house, you know, and whatever. Land in your aquarium, because there's no chlorine in there, kill them off, and have them. So, there's mosquito larvae. They really won't hurt anything, but that's how you know that you've got them. I mean, they got the little fangs there and everything. They're always going to be at the top of the water, and they look pretty similar to that, okay? Um... Just scoop them out with a net and remove it, just like every other thing you're going to see on the rest of the slide as far as insects or whatever. It just net them out. And I'll, uh, here's where I've had a problem, damselflies. I actually had damselflies come in on the plants, believe it or freaking not. I can't believe I only got them in one tank, so it must have been one portion of hornwort that... The larvae or eggs, I have no idea how they reproduce. But anyway, they're both predators. Um, you got to remove them out of the tank. Now, I had the damselfly nymph, the one you see at the very top with the three little tails sticking out of it. That's not a great picture. Usually they, well, in my tanks, they look kind of green, like a, like a very, very greenish-looking dragonfly. But you can tell the one on the bottom, which is a dragonfly, how it doesn't really have the extensions there. It's just got kind of nubs. But either of these will feed on your um, on your fish if they get a chance. Especially the small ones, anything they can catch. Because they're carnivores, they're meat eaters, whatever. Um, and they'll eat on anything you know, that they can possibly get. Eventually, they're going to get out of the nymph phase. Nymph phase? Is that correct? I don't know. And then they'll... Allegedly, they would fly out and then start life all over. So, all the damselflies I found, I killed, and I think I removed a grand total of about seven of them out of one tank. I couldn't find them in any of their tanks, and uh, I haven't seen any since. Because what I think happens is, after a while, um, you know, the eggs or whatever they come from, or the small larvae, then the fish can finally pick them off. But once they get big enough, you know, half inch to an inch, then they may be able to get your fish. All right, enough of that. Mayfly larvae. 
Now, look at all the feathers on the side of it. It also has like three little tails there, just like the damselfish or damselfly does. But you notice the damselfly nymph doesn't have all the little feathers. And again, unless you got, I mean, these guys are small. The ones I pulled out were maybe a half inch to an inch long. I didn't get a microscope, but they definitely look like damselflies, not mayflies. Normally, these guys are safe. There is a few carnivorous versions I found out. They look similar. But anyway, you don't want this crab in your aquarium. You don't want these bugs in there. Okay? It's that simple. This guy, obviously, look at that. You know, look at the very front of him. Those are daggers. I don't know how common water tiger beetle larvae or water tiger tiger beetles are to the U.S. I don't know if it's certain portions like southeast versus west coast versus midwest, uh, whatever. They'll kill everything. They are 100% carnivore. You ever see these guys, just get them out because the fish won't eat them. I mean, they'll capture the fish before anything else. <clears throat> so, just any insects, just get rid of them. You can see them, you can pick them out. There's not going to be more in the aquarium than you can deal with. There's only going to be four, five, six of them. Get them out. And if the um, rest of the fish don't eat the larvae or the eggs left over, you might see one a month from then. Um, and that's basically the end. And again, um, Hater ran on and on. Um, there are a thousand more types of parasites you could have different types of worms like flukes and there are various worms like Demetrius worms and a couple others I didn't get into um, uh, you know earthworms obviously leeches I didn't get into I, I did pull a leech out of one of the aquariums um, that shocked me I, I was absolutely shocked there was a leech in there um, there are various other parasites I just want to hit on the major ones that you can possibly see and really that's the extent of it so again don't take any treatments i said as 100 percent fact uh at all because i don't know i'm not an expert on it i just did a ton of research the last couple of days thought i'd throw together a slideshow for you all and uh, hopefully get a little kudos and a thumbs up um so hope you enjoyed it if i can answer any questions please ask them below i really doubt i can other than what I've told you. Um, but, you know, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, every aquarium he does, he uses ICX, General Cure, and Marethamycin. Um, I'm going to have to stick with that. You know, it's supposed to be shrimp safe and everything else. Do I have these chemicals on hand? Nah, no, I don't. They're, I'll be honest with you, they're kind of pricey. You know, I mean, the problem with it is um, you get those three sets of chemicals, um, they might run you 30 bucks a batch and only last you a week, you know, per tank or whatever. But I'm sure he buys it in bulk and you can figure it out from there. But anyway, tired of boring, uh, boring all y'all. I hope some of you may have enjoyed this, may have learned something. But, you know, maybe next time you see something in your tank, you'll be like, oh, that's what I got. Now I know how to go Google it, look it up, and try to figure out how to treat it. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Um... Later on, fish.